Hey guys, remember the one time a P. Diddy guest appearance didn't sound completely unnecessary? Tough concept to believe, I know, but it happened. But before we get started, this was a Patreon voted episode. And if you'd like to vote on what song I review next, hit up that link below at patreon.com slash rap critic. But okay, let's just cut to the chase. Somebody said they saw you. Because you, you hear this, right? The limp is a wet glove instrumentation that's serving as the poor excuse for a cover of a well-known early 2000s song because early odds nostalgia is creeping in, so the music critic like me is supposed to shake my fist in impotent rage that someone's disgracing the classics. But honestly, I'm a sample junkie, so I love hearing people recontextualize a sound in a new way. In fact, I loved it the first two times that Inya song was famously sampled. When you hear it in the Fuji song Ready or Not, the new age creeping slug feel of the original Boadicea joint has those boom bap drums added into that cavernous sound to make it feel like you're in some deep chamber of hip-hop battling other MCs. And with the Mario Winans mix, I don't want to know, those thicker drums get replaced with a thinner, basketball-like dribbling texture, which gives way to the lighter singing tones of the singer. And now the creeping synths function like the soundtrack of the hauntingly empty mansion of a rich dude up late worried about his wife being with another man. And like I said earlier, it's got to be the best P. Diddy guest verse. One that really adds emotional weight through the detail he gives, while also using some really cool wordplay that, despite itself, never comes off as feeling showy or overly verbose. It's been proven, my love you abusing. I can't understand how a man got you choosing. Undecided, I came and provided. My undivided, you came and denied it. That plus the low-key money piano solo at the end comes together to make one of the tightest pop songs of the new millennium. But more than any of that, honestly, is what draws me back to all of these songs, which is that original ethereal Enya sample. It, it just feels good to listen to on a visceral level. Seriously, you guys, I, I, I love this sample. Every time I hear it, like, when it comes on the radio when I'm driving somewhere, it, it beckons me to stop and listen. It, it compels me. It, it soothes me, calms me, and provides safety in a dark, dim world. I hear its sweet, sonorous charms and... And one has no choice but to listen. So, so you understand when I say I don't mind hearing this track flipped in any form. But man, even I had that spell broken when listening to today's song Creepin'. Which, if you don't know, for the music video is actually the remix where they added in an extra verse, once again from Diddy. Just this, and yes, it's clearly a legacy sample at this point, where you basically sample something in a way where the point isn't to build off of the original sample in a cool new way, it's just to piggyback off the pre-packaged success of a well-recognized song. See, in contrast to that, if you go listen to each of the previous songs I've mentioned, despite using a similar sound, it's transformed enough between each song so that they feel like distinct enough experiences from one song to the next. But this isn't like most legacy samples, where they just shove in the most recognized part up in the front and go, Remember guys? Y you like that song, so <laughs> how about we make this song popular too? No, this isn't just a remix of a remix of a remix of a remix. See, technically it's a remix of a cover of a remix of a remix. Like with that Lotto song, it, she never sings any of the lyrics from Mariah Carey's fantasy as far as I remember. You're just supposed to recognize the genius of love melody in the background and be compelled to keep listening from there. But songwriting wise, replace it with a million other recognizable pop song melodies and it wouldn't have made a real difference in the construction of the hook or the verses. But with this song, the first minute and change is pretty much structured the same as the original remixed, remixed song. But once we're in the second verse and The weekend's still doing a beat-for-beat -beat remake of Mario's vocal line, it, after a while you're, you're just kind of sitting there like, uh, okay, I feel like something different or at least interesting should have happened by now. And usually with these pop songs, you get the immediate recognition of the original song on the intro for the hook, then okay, we hop right into the rap verses that switch things up with new energy. But but here, no, we're we're just kind of stuck with The weekend singing for a strangely extended period of time, but... But musically, he's given so little to work with, his voice just feels like it's hanging out naked in the breeze with no support. But see, that's why I don't blame The Weeknd for this weak outing. He was pouring all the quivering tremolo he could into this to make it work, but the track itself just doesn't gain enough momentum to really help him out. So as I hear it, the fault can squarely be blamed on the guy who's apparently the actual star of the show. Metro. That's right. This isn't a song where the artists performing are the heads of the marquee. Oh, no, no, no. This is a song where the producer is the star of the show. And boy, is he really proving he's worth his salt with the riveting production work happening in the background here. Uh, 
seriously, guys, in an age where doing the what if that old song but in a different era thing is basically a subgenre of YouTube and TikTok videos, why should anyone give a shit about a song like this? They just took the same pre-programmed drum track from every other overly serious sounding emo rap song and stuck it underneath these synths that are so weak they sound like they're always just about to fade out of the goddamn song. And don't get me wrong, minimalism can be cool and super effective when it's done right, but it has to have intention in the production to make up for that empty space. You hear an old Timbaland beat that he did for Missy Elliott and sometimes there'll be like two instruments playing at a time at most, but in that space there's so much vibrant color splashing from one instrument riding onto the next, you can feel the personality of the track shine through. With this, everything musically just feels too muted, uh, like it's attempting to replicate the sparseness of the original, but the only way they could do it was just to make everything sound low energy. The only major thing that really gets switched up is the drum track and how it emphasizes a different part of the beat pattern, but again, that's a hat trick compared to what the typical producer on DJ TikTok would do to spruce up a track like this. Metro and you know what? I, I think the audience would appreciate getting a little bit more too. Then there's P. Diddy's new verse, which of course feels like half the verse isn't even focused on the topic and the other half is just empty, rote platitudes about being cheated on. It's all just such a fucking waste of time. Brilliant rhyme scheme, bro. You, you're really crushing it. And the song is so limp and lifeless, you think they'd want to rush it into the final rap verse after the bridge just like in the original, but no, they let the instrumental kind of linger on for a few bars for some reason. Like, is there supposed to be anything happening here? What, did the solo violin guy get caught in traffic or something? Just get to the last verse already. Well, I guess you just needed to give extra space to clear the runway for the powerhouse of personality that is 21 Savage. I will say though, he does seem to actually be trying to pull off a solid verse in this one. Had me crushing, I was cuffing like the precinct. Like, okay, he's trying to fit some multis and punchlines in the right places. He was right coach, bass, got you Sinead, Side Frisco, I call him my baby. That lyric feels a little cutesy for a song about adultery, but, but okay. If you creepin', just don't let me find out. Get a hotel, never bring him to the house. And yeah, that feels kind of underwhelming as a final line there. I'm just saying, you think he'd say something with a little bit more bite to it. Hell, I thought it was gonna be a line about turning the dude's teeth upside down, and not one where he casually gives his girlfriend proper cheating etiquette advice. For a dude named 21 Savage, he's being pretty 21 civil about things, I'd say. Overall, I gotta say, I give this one a 1 out of 5. It's a real dud of a song that feels like they made every choice that would make it as bland as possible until we got the final result. Like, for real, who the hell had the bright idea of putting these two sleepy-eyed motherfuckers on the same track in the first place? Metro Boomin wants some more, nigga. Right, the producer, yeah, some... Great decision-making skills you got there. Well, that's my take on it, but let's kick it over to the Patreon What You Think section, where I ask patrons what their feelings on the song I'm going to review are. Arthur Botley says, Seems like it would fit in perfectly with those You're in the bathroom during a party and X is playing ASMR videos. Life is Strange says, One of the laziest and pointless song remakes of all time. It's the musical equivalent of the Psycho remake in that it's very similar to the original, aside from a few changes, which makes me wonder why they even bothered remaking it at all. And finally, B-Hop says, I didn't think anyone asked for a Disney live-action remake equivalent of that Mario whining song from the 2000s, but here we are. Well, that's the episode. Leave a like if you like because it helps, leave a comment if you have something to say because that helps even more, and hit the subscribe button because that's what helps the most. And if you want to make music, movie, or stream requests, you always know you can hit that link below at ko-fi.com slash rapcritic. So check out all the links in the description below to support the show, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.